We're going to go through a series of videos on electromagnetism and special relativity, looking in particular at how you can transform the electric and magnetic field, how you can formulate electromagnetic theory as a fully covariant theory, something which is not changed as you change between reference frames. In this first video, um, I'm going to talk about why we're interested in electromagnetism and special relativity. Something which is often not taught um, at undergraduate level is that really special relativity came out of electromagnetism at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. Um, you, you could in fact say that you know, EM led to, oopsie, let me write those in block capitals so you can read my writing, um, led to SR for special relativity. Um, and in particular, one of the key things that was found is that there is no medium required for the transmission of electromagnetic radi radiation. Um, the most famous of these experiments was the Michelson-Morley interferometer, um, which looks at light waves being transmitted both parallel to and perpendicular to the motion of the Earth and found that there was, there was no effect on um, the interference fringes. Um, the other thing that you might want to think about is just to consider um, a charge, a single charge, a point charge at rest. Um, so let's say it's a charge Q at rest. Um, in that situation, we know that there is just an electric field, um, and we know that it's going to be radial and it's going to be spheric disymmetric. Um, if, however, you start, you make a measurement of the electromagnetic fields from that charge when you're moving relative to the charge, so let's say you move at a speed at a, at a velocity v in the x direction, the moving charge will give you a current, um, and that will lead to a magnetic field. So just by changing your the velocity at which you are moving when you're performing the measurement, you change the result of your experiment, and that um, in itself breaks one of the principles of relativity. Um, so there's a need um, to examine the effects of changing the, the frame in which you're measuring things. So we have to introduce this idea um, of a reference frame. Um, and this is, this is a very, very important idea, um, but it's a very simple one. Um, so a reference frame, um, and I will always mean in this case an inertial reference frame, um, is one, it is just where you make the measurement, um, and an inertial reference frame is one which is, there is no acceleration. Um, so, you could, if you like, imagine um, a set of physicists all in spaceships equipped with identical sets of experimental measurement kit, um, all moving um, at, the set, at different velocities with respect to each other. So let's assume that they're in an area of space, there are no gravitational fields. They're all moving at constant velocity, but they're moving at different velocities relative to each other. Those physicists will find identical laws of mechanics, optics, and electromagnetism. Um, but typically, let's say they're, they're measuring their laws of mechanics using um, billiard balls, pool balls, snooker balls, whichever version of the game you, you play. Um, the addition of velocities in that situation um, will not work when you start to consider light. Um, and and that's, that's where we need to think quite carefully. Um, what we find um, is the following, is that the speed of light, if, if you make measurements carefully, um, the speed of light is the same. In all directions, um, that's an important point because it means there's no medium, um, and in all all reference frames. Um, and a, a corollary of that um, is it is also independent of the velocity of the source. And that's quite a remarkable um, statement, quite a remarkable discovery that's been confirmed over many, many years. Um, the idea that velocities should add, particularly if, if you're um, throwing a ball um, out of the back of a moving car, then the velocities should add. You can find videos of people firing um, footballs out of the back of moving vans, and you can see that actually from the point of view of an observer standing um, still relative to the van, um, the ball fired out the back appears to have zero velocity. So um, let's just add in some... some um, some mathematical niceties. We're going to define a frame um, which we're going to call S, and in frame S the coordinates are going to be given by x, y, z, and t. We'll have a second frame um, S prime with coordinates x prime, y prime, 
z prime and t prime and s prime moves um, at velocity v is equal to v zero zero in other words along the x-axis relative to s um, a simple Galilean transform um, the sound of thing that you would derive by doing simple mechanics experiments would tell you that x prime is equal to x minus v times t uh, y prime is equal to y z prime is equal to z and t prime is equal to t um, unfortunately you discover fairly rapidly that that is inadequate when you're thinking about light um, and when you're thinking about um, electromagnetic radiation um, one simple illustration you can do is to think about the phase um, so the phase of a wave is given by, if it's travelling along x, is given by kx minus omega t. That's a number. Um, it's a number which is related to the number of peaks in a wave going past, um, or that, that, that kind of thing. And you can find it. You can find the phase of the wave by counting peaks as they go past you. A number, a number of peaks cannot change when you change from reference frame to reference frame. Um, <clears throat> and what you can find very quickly is that if you apply a Galilean transform to the phase, it is not invariant um, under a Galilean transform. Um, now, for some systems, like sound, um, that's fine, because sound requires a medium um, to, to travel. Um, and what we find is that if, if you know, that the, the velocity um, here in a Galilean transform that changes the velocity of sound is, of course, what we observe as a Doppler shift. So, for systems where, for systems where there's a medium that's required for wave transfer, where there's a medium required, Galilean transform makes sense. But for light, it doesn't. Um, so, let, we now need to in introduce the idea of what are called invariant quantities. Um, we'll come back to these through the course of the videos. Um, the simplest idea of an invariant quantity is to consider a light flash. Um, which takes place at t is equal to t prime is equal to zero. Um, and let's assume that we've got the origins of s and s prime coincident at t equals zero. Um, the, the wave front at a time in the future is going to be given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus c squared t squared. Um, is equal to zero, because that's where it was at the beginning. Um, and that's in the frame s, um, and in the frame s prime, it's going to be given by x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared minus c squared t prime squared, and that must also equal zero because it was observed at the same point, they were coincident. Put a bit of a space in there. Um, and so what we can say is that x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus c squared t squared must equal x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared minus c squared t prime squared. Um, and this quantity here um, is known as the interval. Um, it's, it's often written um, in terms of small changes. So um, we write it as s squared. Um, it's sometimes you, you, you people often think mainly about um, ds squared, so small changes in x, small changes in t, but it's the same basic idea. Um, and that is invariant. We will see in, a, in, an, in, an, um, in another video that charge, total charge, is invariant. Um, and you can show that quite easily from all of these um, ideas. And from this, uh, this idea that the, light that the interval must be invariant when we transform between reference frames, we can derive the Lorentz transforms, um, which are different to the Galilean transforms. Um, and the Lorentz transforms for the two frames we defined, s and s prime, are given by x prime is equal to gamma into x minus beta t. Um, and beta is given by v over c. Remember that s prime is moving with velocity v relative to s along the x direction. And gamma is 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus beta squared. Um, we have that, sorry, let's put y in before z y prime is equal to y, z prime is equal to z, and t prime is equal to gamma into t minus beta x over c squared. Um, these Lorentz transforms 
We'll talk about how you can apply them to other quantities in a different video, um, but they are um, they obey the principles of relativity. They maintain um, the invariance of phase. Um, you can write them more generally um, if you want to. So if you wanted to write them more generally in terms of um, two frames which are moving with different velocities, um, i.e. not just along one axis, um, then you would write the following. Um, I'm going to use r here to mean the vector x, y, z. So r prime is given by um, r plus gamma minus 1 over beta squared, uh, beta dotted with r uh, in the beta direction, minus gamma ct uh, beta. Um, and t prime is equal to gamma into t minus beta dotted with r divided by c squared. Um, and, and all of this, um, this business here, um, where you've got, oh, go away, sorry. Um, all of this business here, where, you, where you've got these kind of minus factors here, are essentially just projecting either the, the component parallel to the velocity, so that's the beta dot r, um, and then the minus one factor, of course, is just projecting out the, par the, the perpendicular. The perpendicular parts don't change, which is why we have an r here. The parallel parts do change, and that's why those are the bits which are multiplied by beta. Um, so that's um, the basic introduction to special relativity and relativity and electromagnetism. I'm not trying to give a full um, in-depth discussion of special relativity. That would be an entire course on its own. Um, but I wanted to motivate the reason for studying it. You know, it's absolutely central to relativity. Um, it also led to the development of special relativity. And I've just reminded you of the basic ideas. So the basic postulates of relativity are that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames, and the speed of light is the same in all inertial reference frames in, in all directions and regardless of the velocity of its source. Um, from those, you can derive these Lorentz transforms we've just looked at. And then there's this key idea that there are things which are invariant. In other words, they will have the same value as we change from reference frame to reference frame. In the next video, I'm going to introduce the sort of the mathematical um, apparatus of four vectors. Um, and we'll start talking about what quantities we can think of in terms of transforming between frames.